Hi. Hi. My name is Michael. And I'm Nemi. And welcome to Mike. And Nemi. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> I know. That was the first time we ever did it. First shot. Yes. In one year. Today, I think we're going to talk about, I don't know, you can kind of debate of whether it only applies to guys, but it's three cautionary signs you must know about, about your boyfriend. I don't know why, but I typically tend to be the kind of guy where guys like to vent to yeah. and share yeah. their girl Inner. issues. Yeah. Ah. And these are the kind of things that I realize. But, okay, but are you not the type of guy that girls also vent to? I guess I'm just kind You're of just the type, type of, of person, person yeah. <laughs> who people vent to. Three cautionary signs. First one, you want to be careful of when they say, I want you to be happy. Yeah. Why do you think? Because they're, first of all, they're implying that you don't seem happy already right now. But like, to me, I believe you don't get any happier than you are today. You can only choose so much to mm-hmm. be happy. And so how are you going to obtain that happiness that they want for you? That means that it's the amount that you have is lacking to some some form of standard. The guy does a whole bunch of things for the girl. Yeah. And, like, and I think that's good, right? The guy yeah, often... Treating them or lavish. They them. really like the person mm-hmm. and then they say, you know, I want you to be happy. I'm doing all these things for you because I just want you to be happy. What I'm trying to emphasize here is the... I want yeah. clause mm-hmm. before you to be happy. Mm-hmm. Everything became about I want. Mm. And that's what I realized later. In the, in the beginning, it's like, wow, this is this guy really likes this person. Mm. He's doing a lot of things for her. Mm. But in the end... It's for him. It was for him because <laughs> it, is what, it was what he wanted. Yeah. I think there's also different ways that people can be happy. For example, in the book... The Five Love Languages by mm-hmm. Gary Chapman, which um, some of you may have heard of. It's a very, very popular book. Mm-hmm. And it talks about five different ways that people feel love and also show their love. Yes. For example, physical affection, acts of service. Yes. Words of affirmation, <laughs> gift giving. Gift giving and quality time. Yeah. Maybe someone's language is to give a lot. And they buy necklaces, right. they buy bags, purchase these expensive meals, speak in that language yes. to show their love. But then they want them to be happy in their way. But then maybe the girl wouldn't feel that and feels like, well, you never tell me or encourage me. You never right. Right. Uh, affirm my talents or my gifts or my skills. That is one of the symptoms of what happens. Mm. But... It also starts with like a deeper root issue that oftentimes the guys are blind to. Yeah. It's that they're so focused on themselves. Yeah. They only look at it from their perspective and their own kind of compartmentalized yeah, I think, box. I think women are like that too. Women are like that too. Yeah. I think people... <laughs> it's humanity issue. It's mm-hmm. a humanity issue. I think people also who don't suffer a lot. Yes. They don't see other people suffering. Or people who suffer too much only see their own suffering. There has to really be a balance there in terms of the ability to know that you and your world is not the world. And of course, it's not bad to want someone to be happy. And it's not bad to say that. Yeah. But I I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes if that can be an overarching theme. Right. Or maybe an underarching theme. Right. That is kind of influencing the narrative or the direction of the relationship. Mm Mm-hmm. And it might become maybe the ways it can manifest would be uh, the guy becomes too suffocating, too overwhelming, too in your face, too my way, like I want this. And if something doesn't go the way he wants it, Mm. then he becomes unhappy. Right. And so it kind of self-defeats the original goal of how you to be happy, but it's it's not going against how I want it. So So now I'm not happy. There's like this this So I'm not happy. Yeah. Yes. Don't think about I want. Think about maybe what? What will be she good, wants like, and put that into your own too. language yes yeah. look at their relationship and look at where it's going and I think that's the second thing do you or your partner talk about the direction of the relationship mm. do you talk about the goals mm. do you talk about where it's going because oftentimes, so many times you hear it's like this disconnected feeling of I don't really know where this relationship is going I don't know where yeah. we stand I mean a relationship is obviously very intimate right that person becomes a huge part of you mm. not only just emotionally but 
like socially, educationally, mm -hmm. familially. These goals have to be discussed in the direction mm -hmm. of the relationship has to be discussed. So men who don't at least bring that up are not really carefully caring. It's important to discuss it because it's wise. If you want to get to a destination, you would kind of map out your destination. Yeah. If you want to have goals, then you would have some objectives to get yeah. there. Why not adopt that kind of ethic right. or direction into your relationship too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For men specifically, why are you so willing to just get naked physically and not get naked mm. financially emotionally. or emotionally mm. or like socially or or like mentally like your mentally. ideas and your hopes and yes yeah what's in your heart and so you have to really consider this relationship of uh, where is it going so you don't have those moments of loss yeah or just confusion at the same time there you have to allow the relationship to be safe enough that mm. these conversations can can happen like a space where you can openly discuss this mm -hmm. And yes, at times it may feel uneasy or even offensive. Mm -hmm. Especially if like views will contradict. Yes, and that is normal a normal part of that, I process. guess, intimacy and process of learning about mm -hmm. each other. If there's no discussion or lead on either end mm -hmm. of the relationship, of talking about goals, and I would say that's a red flag. Mm. Because then where are you going? For some people, right now is also just fine. And that's something that you have to determine with the two of you. You have to know that everyone has the same view, like basic foundational yes. view of yes. what this is and what your boundaries are and what your hopes are in this. Because if that doesn't match up, it's not going to work. And the third one, I don't think I've ever said it. And it's really cheesy. I think it's just more high schoolers or middle schoolers. But or maybe college students. It's when they say, you know, I need you. You complete me. Oh, adults say that. You're my everything. Adults say that. And okay, sometimes it could be romantic, right? It, is, it yeah. sounds very romantic and nice. Uh, but at the same time, it could be a red flag. It's mm -hmm. something that you, you could consider to be cautionary. Mm -hmm. For example, I would never really say you complete me. I've said that a lot. <laughs> I think in ways... It was a red flag. <laughs> I think in ways that I can say that, like, oh, you compliment right. me. You compliment me We compliment very each well. other in our skills and in our things that we are lacking. Yes. Which will be for a separate video. Yes, and I think jokingly we can say, oh, you complete me. I think romantically you can say, I need you. Yeah. I need you right now. Yeah. And that's great, right? Yeah. We're talking about like the underarching theme. Right. Like the presuppositional attitudes deep down inside. Mm-hmm. When they say that, okay, do they really mean I need you? Do they really mean you complete me? You're my everything? Yeah. And I'll tell you that's why that's a huge red flag if that's the case. No person will ever satisfy. Yeah. And plus, it's way too much of a burden and expectation for it to even, reality. in reality, ever be fulfilled, whoever it is. I have a question. Yes. So, when we were both in high school, how did you feel as somebody who was on the receiving end of this kind of one of the red flags. You know what, I never looked at it that way because- I me, always looked at it that way. For me, going into a relationship, I knew that it would be difficult. I knew that, you know, you're not entering something where the grass is greener. Yeah. You're going entering something where, you know, it's kind of You desolate. gotta kind of fix it. Yeah. You gotta work at it. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, that's a good question because we really struggled through our relationship. Yeah. I think for me, I knew that in ways you viewed me that way, at least very close, maybe like 99%, like yeah. you're my everything. And I knew, and I would often say, I'm not your everything. Yeah. And I often failed you. And I said, you know, I always redirected it yeah. towards God. Yeah. But I often said, you know, I'm not, and I'm going to disappoint you, mm -hmm. but you know, I'll try my best. Mm. And so it was a lot of, like love and pruning. It right. was a lot of me leading. In a sense, I felt like I was, I did feel like I, would, I was in a sense the father you never had in ways. Yeah, and the brother. In a sense, I was like the brother you never had. Or and the also friend the friend I never <laughs> had. I never had friend. Yes. So I did feel like I played all those roles yeah. before I ever really played 
a boyfriend or a husband or a husband role. Mm. Yeah. So it was more of those roles, and I think that's changing. Right. So that's interesting. No, it has changed. And now it's changed a lot. Where you're more independent in that sense, mm. and we are more kind of side partners, by side and yeah. together and partners and and rather than like a clutch <laughs> and a than bag. A- uh, he's he's. <laughs> I'm in a plastic bag and I'm just you're holding me like this I guess you can put it that way <laughs> but I knew entering the relationship it would be like that it's going to be difficult mm. hard work mm. there's like a bright light at the end of the tunnel mm. at the same time yeah and that's our relationship here it are. is and it's still ongoing it's still in yeah. the work I am still in the work in progress as well mm-hmm. going back to point three I need you to complete me one way that could be problematic in a sense it does just because it's a, just because I would characterize it or flag it as a red flag or even characterize it as problematic it's not to say that you should disconnect the relationship or just not yeah, go into yeah. it or it's not to say you shouldn't say those things what I want to point out is that when someone does say that you complete me you're my everything mm-hmm. I need you always And if that's like the underlying kind of foundation of how at least one of the person in the two-person relationship feels, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's quite burdensome. That's going to be a wave, a slow, non-stop of a wave of burden that's going to drag the other person down and slowly drown them in a sense, you know? Did you drown? uh, Yes, I did drown many times. You did drown. (laughs) You know, because you... I killed I think as people, we're not designed... We're not designed to be to lifeboats. Bear yeah. Because the I think the that's burden. why I died. Because I was bearing a lot of my mom's burdens. Like her emotional mm-hmm. hopes and dreams. I think that happens to a lot of people. Where like people yes. cause trauma to other people. Yes. By doing that. That is not also to say to it doesn't mean you never share. Yeah. Or you never get into relationships. No. Or you should never say those things. No. I mean, you have to go we through your difficulties to together and, and communicate. Communicate too. You have to share. So another interesting principle is, you know what? You have to communicate. Yeah. And you have to share about yourself so you're known. Do you think that you're only loved to the extent in which you are known? Yeah. You're only loved to the extent in which you're known. Yeah. Well, they can't love what they don't know about you say that you love me i love you <laughs> well you wouldn't love me if you knew that i uh, oh, I'm scared. spent ten thousand dollars in the gambling last night and i, I lost it all <laughs> this is for ten <laughs> say that you love me i love you well i had uh, an affair last weekend and um, oh, you die. <laughs> <laughs> they're very real mm. examples yes i would never feel loved by you if you said you love me if I was holding that if you were hiding that yeah it's too. like oh you would not say that if you knew about A, B, and C mm. or elemental K yeah. <laughs> all the way down to Z elemental <laughs> P I said it wrong there's this whole hype and rhetoric about the discourse about love yourself love yourself you know yeah but before we even can say love yourself you have to say know yourself the mm. great philosopher mm. Socrates said that. How know will you thyself. love yourself if you can't even know yourself? Yeah. And sometimes that has to yeah. be done communally. You get, yeah. you have to, you can't just have it between your spouse or your your boyfriend or girlfriend. Or you need friends. You need mentors. There's a rule of thirty three, which is thirty three percent of the people you spend with are people who you mentor. Thirty three percent of the people you spend time with are people who are kind of like in the same life stage as you and the other 33 percent of people you hang out with should be people who are beyond you like you that you you are mentored by yeah that you're mentored by Mm. and so it's the collective your own kind of social circle safety net in which you interact with yeah and you grow and learn and you're tested and and you get to know yourself yeah yeah and know each other and so you only love yourself to the extent hey you only love love yourself (laughs) yeah y'all play a hater you should love yourself that's so important it's so important you have to know yourself to love yourself even an idol that's the lyric it's like I know who I am and I know what I want and like you can't tell me that I'm something else because I know and I love what I know it's been an honor (laughs) let me add a gospel implication here okay preach it no just kidding 
No, not everyone believes in God. We know that. Mm -hmm. And I know that we talk a lot about God and we definitely don't want to give the impression that we're shoving it down your throat. And more so because it's such a meaningful, purposeful part of our lives. Yeah. At least we want to share in a wholesome or loving yeah. or winsome way. Or encouraging way. God knows you more than you know yourself. Yeah. And by that scale, no other demonstration of love has been greater yeah. than God's love for you. Yeah. I mean, we are the chief of sinners. Christians are the worst of sinners. The biggest hypocrites. <laughs> the biggest hypocrites. Yet God's love is greater still. I think that was an interesting discussion. Do you feel like there are differences in male-female dynamics for relationships? Or do you think that they're too stereotyped in this previous generation or this generation? Well, this generation, if you're talking about like millennial, young millennial, Gen Z's, it's kind of like... It's kind of everywhere right now. Yeah, the the labels are changing, the expectations are changing. Yeah. There's a fluidity in a sense. Yeah. I can't really speak too much into that without going into a longer discussion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but just I, cut out the whole question. No, no, I want to keep it in. Okay. I do think that there are differences. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I think all of these red flags come from a point of trauma or a complex something that had been lacking for mm. these men and i think it also applies to women so in the beginning of the video you asked me let me know if this also applies to women i think it does also apply to women <laughs> prime example number three <laughs> and so yeah i think it it always and it, not just these things but other red flags too shopaholism right, right. or over fangirling because like sometimes couples break up because of like fanboying or fangirling and like jealousy over celebrities mm -hmm. that's a thing it happens to people and we're all people it's just a matter of like knowing that you do this and trying to determine if it's something that you will work with and also something that you want to move on from because I think too much of anything is bad so it's a wrap <laughs> Let us know what you think. Bye.